The powers left the church because sin is in the camp. We think of our government, and I know the ministers, my brothers have been preaching all week long about the state that this country's in. But we have no idea. That's just the little bit we know about. Did you know that Obama just dedicated a brand new statue to the lesbian, gays, bisexual, and transgenders? Anything that they can do to rip God out of this country, that's what they are doing. The latest Gallup poll tells us that 10% of D.C. is now claiming to be either lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender. The new poll that's just come out says one in 17 in Washington will end up being a part of some crime. That's sad. And then we think our country can go on like this? We can't continue to shake our fist in the face of God and expect him to just let us slide by. That's what's wrong with us. We're spoiled in America. ISIS would be no problem if this country got back to God. God would take care of this country. You read your Old Testament. It wasn't who had the most people fighting. It wasn't fancy weapons. It was whose side God was on, and he fought the battles for them. But we can't have it both ways. We can't say, God, take care of our country, and then blaspheme them. Our country is in bad shape. But sadder than that is the fact that the church is in bad shape. I read a report several years ago at one of our ministers' conventions. The hotels reported that they had the biggest sales in pornography movies during that time. Where is our power? That's exactly what's happening to our power. The Bible says that we should know those that labor among us. You want to know what's happening? We're kicking the Holy Ghost out of the door. And the Holy Ghost, one of the gifts of the Spirit, is discernment of the spirits. I'm telling you what. When we are ministers of the gospel, we better have discernment of spirits. We better know when a wolf comes through those doors in sheep clothing. Church is in sad shape. It really, really is. Sad, sad shape. We have fancy names for things nowadays. It's a woman's choice. It's not a woman's choice. It's murder. Call it by the right name. It is murder. We have what they call sipping saints. I'm here to tell you something. There's no such thing as a sipping saint. The President of the United States, in making a statement about the latest terrorist attack in Turkey, made this statement. He said, we will stop hate crimes. You know why he said that? He wasn't saying that against ISIS. He was saying that because he wants to say that Christians hate homosexuals and hate, hate sinners, and he wants to put the blame somehow back on the Christian. And I'm telling you right now, I don't hate the homosexual. I don't hate the lesbian. I don't hate the sinner. I love them. But I'm telling you what, I sure do not agree with the sin they're in. And I'm not about to stand up here and say, oh, pat you on the back and say, God loves you. I want to tell you something. God does love you, but there's one thing that matches God's love, and that's the wrath of God. And America is about ready to experience that wrath. Sad to say, but it's the truth. No hunger. No hunger in the church. I want to tell you something. If I could somehow take my mind 
take my head and put it on some young Christians today and let them see what they're missing out on. Let them begin to see like a DVD player, some of the services that I've experienced down through the years. I want to tell you something. Maybe it would spark a little bit of hunger in their hearts. You might be happy sitting with a little devil, do you, and a little bit of sermon out and singing a couple songs. But I'm telling you what, I was born in the fire, and I'm never going to be happy just in the smoke. It's true. But we've got to get that hunger back, church. I know what it is like to lay on the floor prostrate, speaking in an unknown tongue for hours. I know what it was like to be so drunk my husband had to help carry me to the car because I was so drunk in the spirit. I know what those kind of experiences are like. I know what it's like to see the hand of God touch my kids and see them healed. We're not seeing it anymore, and it's not God's fault. It's our fault. God never moved church. We've got a some we can talk about it till the cows come home, but until we hit our knees and say, God, fill me with hunger. Let me be more hungry for you than I am for McDonald's after church. Amen. That's when it's gonna come back. We need the power back in the church. But the sin in the camp is draining us of every bit of power. We become used to stagnant, dead services. And I'm telling you what, I'm not satisfied. I want more and more and more and more. The other day I said, Lord, for every saint of God that really don't want it, pour it into me. And I meant it. I'll tell you what, I'm not much for sports. I'm not a sports person. But I'll tell you what, I sure do get excited about Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Sin in the camp. If we want the power back, we have to get rid of the, the, the sin. Amen. You know, sin has a way of doing two things to us. It puts us in chains, and it blinds us to the truth. It tells us that everything is going to be okay. And that we'll be able to handle whatever it is we're involved in that we know we shouldn't be. And the devil will whisper to us and he'll say, it's all right. Everybody else is doing it. You don't have to be like one of those weird fanatics. Well, I'm here to tell you tonight, I am a weird fanatic for the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I remember talking about putting my head on people's shoulders to let them see what it was like, some of the services. I remember when, when my older children were young. I have my middle daughter here tonight and my baby daughter. But um, the two older ones, when they played, it wasn't video games. And it wasn't things that kids do today. They played church all the time. I remember I would come into a room that went on me sitting there in the name of Jesus and over they would go. I'd go into the bathroom, make sure they were getting their bath because there was a lot of commotion going on in there. Sherry can tell you I'm telling you the truth. They were in there baptizing each other in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I'm going to tell you something. We had one, two, three, sometimes four-week revivals. And my kids wasn't stuck off somewhere. They were in the service experience in the presence of God. That's what's carried them through all these years. They weren't sitting at home and mama off to church by herself. They were by my side. And they can tell you, they got rowdy, they got one warning, and then they got to look. And when they got to look, they knew it was time to go to the nursery and get their butt whooped. That's just the way it was. They didn't fuss in the services. They knew better because they would get the look. And that's the way it was. It was natural to them. It was just as natural as taking a bath or eating a meal. That's all they knew. But I was young, and I went to the pastor. I said, Pastor, do you think my kids are blaspheming? And he laughed. He said, no, that's just all those kids know, and it's getting down there deep. And that's what they, they act out when they're playing. But it's what's carried them through the years. Hallelujah. 
I remember the little church in Orbazonia that we would go to, and, and Brother Peck can probably remember this. They had pews there. It was the funniest pews I had ever seen. They, you could take the back and pull them over, and then it would become the seat. It was awesome for kids. I'd take my kids to revival, and they would fall asleep, and, and I'd just put and turn the seat over and lay them on the seat right in front of me. And that's where they slept many a night. Didn't hurt them one bit. It was getting down deep in there. Amen. We wouldn't want to offend anybody today. I'm telling you what, the, the favorite scripture of most people used to be John 3, 16. I remember when I was in school, they would come with these little testaments, and if you could quote that Bible verse, you got a free little testament. And it was, it was the most, pe most people knew it by heart from the time you were a little kid. Now, all people want to quote is, don't judge me. Just not, lest you be judged. Well, I'm here to burst your bubble a little bit tonight. Amen. The Bible doesn't say we're not supposed to judge the church. Amen. He said, the Bible says we're not supposed to judge the world. But you read 1 Corinthians chapter 5 when you get home, and you'll see. And by your fruits you shall know them. And I want to tell you, like I said a few minutes ago, if a preacher don't tell them, how are they ever going to find out? Amen. And people say, oh, church isn't a place for politics. Somebody might get offended. Somebody might like Hillary, and you're standing up there running her down. Well, I look at it like this. I don't have to be like the pastor said, politically correct, but I have to be Bible correct. Amen. Hallelujah. The blood does not cover sin. The blood washes sin away. There is a difference, church. There's a difference. And I know sometimes people struggle. But I'm here to tell you tonight, we need to get deliverance back in the church. Amen. God still delivers. He didn't change. Amen. But he doesn't cover sin. The blood doesn't cover. It washes it away. And it to the Bible tells us that we become a new creature in him. Behold, all things are passed away. And behold, all things become new. I'm telling you, a lot of the church world today smell like, talk like, act like the world. That is where the power is going. Amen? Hallelujah. You know, we used to sing a little song in church. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. Remember that little song? For the Father up above is looking down in love. You know, we, we need to take that to heart. We don't understand that what our eyes focus on stays in there. I remember one time years ago, we took a trip to Maine. And I'm telling you what, I thought Maine was halfway around the world. I thought I would never get there. All I saw was that yellow stripe in that highway the whole time for all those hours. That night when we finally got there and I laid my head down, that's all I saw in my mind all night long. And for a few days later was that yellow mark right in the middle of that road. The things that we set our eyes to see, we best be careful. Because it's going to be rewound in our mind. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. You know, so many times we think things are so innocent, but the devil can use them. I remember when I worked for Dr. Daly in the office, I had no choice of what music they had on. I was just a worker there. They played country music in there all the time. And I didn't realize it, but it was getting in my mind. I didn't realize it. I wasn't trying to concentrate on the words of those songs, but it was getting in there. One day I come home and I was humming something and I thought, what in the world? And it was fancy, don't let me down. And I thought, what in the world and where did that come from? It's because I was sitting in there and listening to that and it was going into my mind. 
And you might say, oh, a little country music won't hurt you. Oh, a little rock music won't hurt you. Well, I want to tell you something. It might not send you to hell, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt.